And now our special guest, Tony Robbins. Tony, it's been a fascinating hour to meet three people from very different experiences. Yes. But actually, common themes being they've all had knocks in their lives of, of different Huge. degrees, yeah. which have caused a lot of emotions. And it's really how you deal with those emotions. So you've got a sort of five-point plan that anyone can follow to get over stress and trauma in their lives. Talk me through it. Well, I think, uh, first of all, I want to make one thing clear. The quality of your life is the quality of where you live emotionally. Like, we all have a home. Angry people time, find a way to get angry, even if their life doesn't have anything to be angry about. We can always find it. Sad people find a way to be sad. Caring people find a way to care for other people. So one thing you got to identify is where are you living? What's your home? What's your habit? And then the way to change it is that when I was homeless, literally on my own just getting started, I didn't have the internet, but I decided I had to go to a library and I had to feed my mind. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people the first stage is, you know, weeds grow automatically. Uh, one of my teachers taught me, he said, every day stand guard at the door of your mind and feed it something good. Because if your worst enemy puts sugar in your coffee here, you're fine. If your best friend by accident trying to help you put some strychnine, you're dead. So if you feed your mind every day, 30 minutes a day of reading something, hearing something. Second, you got to strengthen your body. And the reason, Pierce, is fear is physical, mm. right? So is stagnation. So is numbness. So is sadness. Such, so is rage. And when you go in and change your body by an intense workout or a run or even an intense walk and the blood's flowing through you, science has shown it instantly changes your biochemistry. And now your mind and body are working together. Third thing, all these people did in common, if you watch, they found a mission bigger than themselves. Yeah. Something that they wanted to aspire to that was worth more than their pain. And then the fourth thing is, you got to find a role model. You know, you heard it with Nick. Um, almost everybody finds a role model that makes it real. I was with uh, Warren Buffett and with Sarah Blakely, the youngest uh, billionaire. We're doing this roundtable about the future. And when you listen to this woman, and when women meet her, they don't just love Spanx or product that made her a billionaire. They love this woman because she's a role model of what's possible. Yeah. When you get a role model, it becomes real to you if you get a plan, you get a goal plan, and you take massive action. And the last step, number five, there's always somebody all worse off than you are. I don't care what you've done. So if you can go help somebody worse off, it puts your life in perspective. And it also reminds you life's not about me, it's about we. I always tell people, the secret to a great life, the secret to living is giving. And there's, when you realize there's something in you still to give, even if you lost your legs, even if you've been through a horrific financial situation, your life can improve. But more importantly, you'll have a meaningful life because your life will contribute to other people. If I said to you, you're right, Tony Robbins, you're a fabulously successful rich, famous, super fit, good-looking guy. <laughs> you sound like you're describing yourself here. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm obviously a part of this, quite on the same fitness levels. Um, if I said to you, look, you can, you can have any one thing. You can have good health, you can have money, you can have the fame yeah. that allows you to inspire people. What would you choose as a, as a one thing? Um, I certainly, I think without health, you're not around to do anything, but I think it's a life of meaning. I don't think I know it is. Feeling like your life matters uh, because you, I mean, you've had the experience, you and I both have lots of friends who've achieved everything they could ever dream of, and they're miserable. I yeah. get the phone call to help turn them around. They're missing a meaningful life, and meaning comes from two things. I always tell people happiness comes from progress. If you can do something where you're growing, and because you've grown, you have something to give to other people that's meaningful, insight, love, caring, something, then life is rich. Because happiness comes and goes. Happiness is not mm -hmm. here every moment. And happiness isn't all it's cracked up to be. Meaning is, there are people that have gone through horrible times. Mm -hmm. I met a woman who was 109 years old and she was, you know, in the concentration camps. She's the oldest living Holocaust survivor. And that woman's life is so rich because of all the pain because she's used that to help other people. Mm -hmm. Still at 109, she's mm -hmm. strong, you know, she shares her music. She does the things that make her feel like she's got a contribution. So at 109, she's fully alive. Amazing. Tony, as always, incredibly inspiring. Please come back soon. Thank you very much. Tony Robbins. And we'll be right back.